All right, we are live on Wednesday night. Not much going on in our nation today, huh? <laughs> My goodness, I'm telling you, Washington, D.C. is a mess. And uh, we uh, will sure pause and pray tonight. I uh, just want to encourage you. I hope that uh, you got the newsletter and um, we had a wonderful announcement on there. If you saw the newsletter today, uh, Rebecca Chickering is our brand new children's director and she will be starting this Sunday. We will be making sure she's introduced to you in both services. Um, and uh, she'll be uh, making rounds with the children and making touches with them this coming Lord's Day. And we are so thankful that we are fully staffed as a church. And uh, Rebecca will be here this Sunday. So uh, you'll want to read about her in the newsletter. And then we'll have that in the announcement page on Sunday as well. A little, a little uh, bio on her and her picture so you can recognize her. I hope that you have uh, been able to uh, take a couple minutes and uh, print off the handout tonight. We're going to do at least two studies um, this week and next week is the plan to wrap up the Be Blessed series. Um, and I, I'm going to share tonight several other things in Scripture that the Bible says our blessing grounds that if you will live this way God says I will honor that in your life that these are things I will greatly bless and so we're going to look at those uh, tonight and then uh, next week and uh, it may even take a third week but we we're going to wrap this series up and uh, we are looking at uh, what we'll be doing next I know that our women's ministry in February, we'll be starting a new Bible study, and uh, they're finishing up, a, I think, a, a book for the book club, and that's coming up uh, next for them. Our youth are back in full session now on Wednesday night, and uh, we will be uh, probably in February starting something for children after Rebecca gets on staff and can get her feet uh, underneath her, and we'll be having something for kids as well on Wednesday night. And um, we uh, know the college group, I believe it's next Tuesday, um, they will be starting back. So uh, it's nice to see things getting started back here with the new year. So hopefully you've been able to uh, print off uh, a handout tonight. And tonight I'm gonna just be talking about living a life God blesses. Well, we talked about eight characteristics in the Beatitudes that God blesses. These are, as, as the word blessed, it can be translated as you are to be congratulated, happy are you. Well, tonight I'm going to talk about that same thing, only these are other passages that tell us that we will be blessed if we do these things, if we practice these things, have these attitudes. Of course, we're talking about attitudes in the Beatitudes. But um, these are more things that we do in Scripture that God says, I will honor that and I will bless you. And I will bless you in a great way. So I want you to join me in uh, looking at the study tonight. And again, I hope you have one of these. Um, I uh, want you to go ahead uh, throughout our time tonight. Um, just share your prayer concerns and we will gladly look at those uh, at the end of the service. Probably going to cut off a little bit earlier tonight so we can spend a little more time in prayer. I definitely want to pray for our nation. Uh, we don't have the youth and the youth leaders assembled in here tonight. But uh, we want to spend some, some time praying and talking about how we should pray for our nation and what is the hope for our nation. So um, one of the things I wanted to also draw your eye to um, I wrote the longest article I think I've ever written in my life today. <laughs> it's, three, it's three pages uh, on just typed out single space uh, pages. But um, it's really a summation of the message I preached on Sunday. So when we talked about some post-election uh, biblical principles 
for us to live by last week on Sunday. I, I, I tried, since you didn't have notes and it wasn't on the screen, and God had really just given that to me the last couple of days before Sunday, and I preached a different message um, than uh, what we had scheduled. Um, I wanted to get something to you in print and writing so that uh, hopefully uh, that'll be almost like notes for you. So I'm going to put that on my blog this week as well. And uh, so you're welcome to check that out. It's the article in our newsletter. And if any of you are not getting our newsletter, please, please uh, let us know that. You can simply uh, write uh, to to either um, just uh, our you just send it to my assistant. Uh, she takes care of, of uh, who gets the newsletter. So her name is Georgina. It's J O R N I. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Trying to. <laughs> Georgina. Uh, J O R G I N A H. At discover the oaks.com and i have thoroughly embarrassed myself and i'm going to be in trouble with her in the morning uh, but anyway you can write her and i think you also could write just simply communications communications at discover the oaks.com and either one of those uh, she will get or either austin will get and we can get your email added to um, our email list and believe me you want to get that because our primary way of communicating is obviously on Sunday and our second primary way of communicating with you is in the printed uh, announcement page we do on Sunday and the announcements that are on the screen and then also the newsletter on Wednesday so every Wednesday we send out a newsletter and everything that's going on at the Oaks is in there and uh, we would love for you to have that. In fact, it's more thorough. Uh, it's a, a bigger one than, uh, than what we have in the, uh, um, on Sunday with the announcement page. So if you would, join me in the scriptures tonight. And we're going to be in several passages. This is kind of a topical running series uh, here because we're talking about what God promises he will bless. And so we want to want you to look at that uh, with us. And um, I uh, want to show you some things that I think are really, really important. Um, I have said this before when we started this series, but I want to remind you of it tonight. And that's simply this. Uh, did you if you look at the word blessed or blessings or the word bless or blesses, uh, in the scripture, you'll find that it uh, occurs 426 times, 426 times in 377 passages. So if the Bible speaks to blessings, blessed or blesses, 426 times in 377 passages, you want to look at those passages and you want to see what God promises he'll bless. And he says he'll bless many things. In fact, what you could discover with this short list of what God has in the past biblically and historically blessed, then you can align your life with these principles and you would discover God's blessed zone where he puts out his blessings. Life at its absolute best you know there's a pastor that had a parrot and the parrot just knew four words i mean it two it's really two words it just repeated it over 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 and over but you know he'd been around this pastor and obviously he heard the pastor say these things but the bird would say let's pray let's pray and he said it over and over and over that's all he ever said well, the pastor discovered that one of his lay leaders at the church, he too had a parrot. And that parrot would say, let's kiss, let's kiss. And that's all that that bird would say. Two words repeated over and over. Let's kiss, let's kiss. Well, they had a dinner one night, got 
brought their, uh, the lay leader came over to the pastor's house and brought the, uh, his parrot and they ended up putting them in the same cage. And uh, the one lay leader's parrot said, let's kiss, let's kiss. And the pastor's parrot said, thank you, Lord, my prayers have been answered. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I do know God answers prayer. And it's important that we come to that point because that's going to be the very first thing I want to talk to you about tonight is prayer. In fact, I want to take you to an Old Testament passage that you will find in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And I want to take you there. And before we start tonight, let's pray. Father, we uh, come tonight and uh, Lord, we can laugh at that uh, story about the parents but father uh, our hearts are heavy as we have watched uh, a second impeachment uh, take place of president trump uh, lord in in congress today so uh, father it is um, it's just hard to watch all that's going on in washington and father uh, we just pray that your will is accomplished and father you would uh, even guide the rest of this process of what is going on and uh, father if it's to be stopped stop it father if uh, this is something that you're working in i just pray that uh, we'd see that in the days ahead it's it's deeply troubling i know last wednesday uh, brought much heartache to all of us and uh, father i know there's been careless words and I know there's been careless words even by our president. But Father, we just pray that uh, your will is accomplished in this. We pray that you'd watch over our nation. Father, you say that you uh, guide the, the king's heart. And Lord, we need you to do that in Congress and in the Senate. That you would guide their heart. Lord, I thank you for the good uh, uh, work that was done. Lord, at the judicial branch yesterday, and uh, Father, the, the reversal that was done with the 6-3 vote, and Father, uh, we thank you for uh, just the pro-life victory that came yesterday. But Lord, uh, we want to see more victories that, Lord, are, are obvious and clear things that you teach in your word. So Father, tonight, we pray that we would remain on blessing ground, and on this first uh, point tonight, we know that uh, this is gigantic, so we're going to spend more time on that. And uh, Lord, I don't think we'll spend all our time there tonight, but we definitely want to focus uh, the church and those watching tonight to be people of prayer. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look with me at that first passage that we're going to look at tonight found in um, first chronicles chapter four and um, we're going to look at verse 10 in a minute but i want to share with you just fill this in the first secret to unlocking blessings into your life personally is through prayer if you're a person of prayer, you're going to be blessed because of that. It's just the way that it is. You will be richly blessed by taking in the Word of God. So when that happens, that's going to bless you in extraordinary ways. And uh, let me just share with you something that Billy Graham said a long time ago. When he was still here on the earth, in fact, he was a fairly young man when he, when he wrote this. It was a, a book on, on prayer. He said, heaven is full of answers to prayer for which no one ever bothered to ask. Isn't that something? Think that's true? That there's reservoirs of answered prayer there in the kingdom of heaven. God was very willing to give, but nobody asked. Something to think about, huh? I, I think we sometimes can relate more to Isaac Singer, who, who confessed, I only pray when I'm in trouble, but I'm in trouble all the time, so I pray all the time. I don't know about you, but maybe you can relate to that. I pray all the time. <laughs> well, I want to take you to something. Uh, some years ago, 
and I uh, have gotten to meet, uh, kind of through Kimma's work, um, I got to meet Bruce Wilkerson and uh, kind of hang out with him a couple of days while he was working with uh, the company that Kimmel worked for in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, Bruce Wilkerson is somebody that most of Wilkinson is somebody you will, most of you will recognize. But I wanted to hold this little book up because this is probably his most famous book is the prayer of Jabez. And uh, I remember when this little book came out, I didn't know much about Bruce at that time. I uh, got to know a lot more about him after uh, this little book came out. And then he had a sequel to that book called The Secret of the Vine, Secrets of the Vine. And it's really based out of uh, John 15 and talking about the true vine and how we have to abide uh, to be blessed of God. But both of these books, when I, I remember when I first heard about it, I wondered if it was kind of a, a health and wealth type book. Uh, came out years ago. It was a bestseller uh, for, for many, many uh, weeks. I wondered if it was kind of a name it, claim it type book. Uh, I was a little suspicious, but I got a copy, started reading it myself, and it's a very short read. It's only about 100 pages. It's very, uh, both of them are very small, small books. But uh, when I read it for myself, I discovered that it uh, was a book that I really wanted to commend to people. And in fact, I did a little preaching off of it uh, after it, you know, so many people were reading it. I, I felt like uh, it'd be a good thing to address. But I think it could be commended for several things. One, it stirred interest on the parts of people to pray. Even though some of the prayer is focused on praying for yourself, uh, it did focus people, and it, for some people, many people, it revitalized their prayer life. For some of them, it brought them to God. They found Christ through it. I also appreciate that Wilkerson, uh, Wilkinson in his book stresses the need for dependence on God throughout the book, especially the second book. It's all about if you walk with God, if you, if you really abide in God, you re remain in Christ. Um, and the blessings that come because of that. I also wanted to point out that I, I like that he tells us that the only source of true blessing is found through God, that only God can really confer spiritual blessings on us. And uh, so I appreciate that. So Jabez is someone for us to emulate, no doubt about it. Uh, he... Uh, valued God's blessing and sought that and you have this scriptural command about him for that uh, calling him uh, more honorable than his brothers in the passage uh, also I'm very glad that uh, Bruce in his book says that Jabez uh, will from now on be someone that won't just be a trivia question but uh, people may uh, know a little more about him but everything in Scripture that has anything to do with Jabez is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 10. It's in the middle of one of those lengthy geological tables. It's a wonderful passage of Scripture and a great example of prayer. But it greatly overstates the case to suggest that Bruce, in this little book that he wrote, had found some kind of secret key to unlocking blessings that God has in store for believers. I do believe if you learn the principles and you practice that, they're biblical, and there's blessings there. To treat uh, Jabez's prayer as this, uh, you know, just magic words that we can pray, and you're going to have all these blessings. You know, it's all about living out what God calls us to live. In fact, I, I appreciate that in the preface of the book, Bruce wrote a letter to one reader that said this, Dear reader, I want to teach you how to pray a daring prayer that God always answers. It's brief, only one sentence with four parts and tucked away in the Bible, but I believe it contains the key to a life of extraordinary favor with God. It's basically a prayer by an obscure Old Testament char character named Jabez that asks God to bless him and expand his influence to keep him from harm 
The background and the prayer are found in these two verses, and I want to read those to you now. If you would, go with me there, because I did find this book to be a blessing. And uh, I uh, have prayed this prayer on more than one occasion. Uh, in one of the ways that I pray uh, for my own life and myself, uh, and prayed that uh, considerably after I read the book. So I wanted to show this to you. Uh, it's found in First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. How about that? To have faith in a God that is a God that answers our prayers and even at times answers our dreams and meets us there. God brings this prayer, this dream to completion in Jabez's life. God's ready to answer prayer. There's no doubt about it. He wants us to be involved in personal and persistent prayer. Just like Jesus told us to be praying, even though with great, a lot more detail of how to pray on a daily basis when he starts that prayer in Matthew chapter 6 by saying, Our Father who art in heaven. And in that prayer, he tells us of daily things that we should pray for, including that we pray for daily bread. That every day we pray for daily bread. Um, I, you know, other cultures just get that a lot more than we here in the States. If you've ever lived abroad, even in uh, some first world country countries, um, they, they just grocery shop different than we do here in the States. Uh, many of them don't have large refrigerators or freezers, and they will go to the marketplace and buy food for the day or maybe for two days. But they... Uh, the concept of daily bread is more a part of their culture. And especially in these third world countries where uh, that food, it may be that they earn enough money to feed their family a meal that they pick up at the end of the day with uh, some a little bit of cash that they have. But God calls us to pray. And I'll tell you this, if today has taught us anything further about our nation from last Wednesday to this Wednesday we need to be people that are praying for our nation and for those that are in leadership we're going to spend some time at the end of our evening tonight doing just that and I want to talk to you more about prayer in that regard but the Bible calls us to have faith in God have faith in prayer have faith in God answering our prayers he says that we should ask and not waver but another blessing just like the beatitudes that we've covered the eight beatitudes I wanted to share with you these several other principles that God says I will bless this in your life and I'm going to give you several of those that I find in scripture other places and there's more than what I'm going to share but these are ones that clearly state God blesses and honors this in our life. And he will bless you for being a person of prayer. Whether you pray the, pray the prayer of Jabez or you pray uh, what we call the Lord's Prayer, which is more of the disciples' prayer, how he taught the disciples to pray in Matthew 6, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. I want you to look at the second principle, and that is this. God expects us, and hopefully you've got uh, the handout there, but God expects us in our lives that we do this as a second principle for unlocking blessings into our lives. These are just obedient factors. They help you be blessed of the Lord in your life. God actually uses words like, I'll bless you for this. You are to be congratulated. Happy are you, like we've been talking about. 
So in Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, it said, Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. So the prophecy being referred to is obviously the book of Revelation. But does that have contextual meaning for the entire Bible? Well, that's an easy answer because the Bible gives us answers. In fact, that passage that says that he will bless those who honor that which is in the prophecy found in the book of Revelation. So here's this, here's this thing. This is why I'm such a big believer on reading God's Word. And I just started reading the Word. If, you, if any of you are interested, I have a six-day plan. I, I built it off of my, uh, my own Bible uh, program, my Bible software. And uh, I built that off of uh, my Bible software to be a six-day reading plan. And you read an Old Testament passage, you read a New Testament passage, then you'll read um, a, uh, seven, eight verses out of the Psalms, and then you'll have a little, little reading out of Proverbs. So you get a little variety every day uh, of reading that, and it ends up being an average of 99 verses per day. It'll take you about 15 to 20 minutes. It just depends on how slow or fast a reader you are. But I'm telling you, God will bless you for honoring his word. And you will be reminded of things in your life that God says this. This is something he says in the scriptures. And if you know that, then you're able to live that out. We suffer in our culture from a lack of knowledge. And we're really suffering from a lack of biblical knowledge. God will honor your life and he will bless you as you read, study, and obey the word of God. And I want to call you to this in this passage. So fill that in. Saturate your heart and your mind with the word of God. Saturate your heart and mind with the word of God. And in that passage, here's what it says. Again, it's Revelation. It's talking about this prophecy that's there in Revelation. The question is, does it apply to all of Scripture? Absolutely it does, and I'm going to prove it to you in just a second. Look what it says. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. Blessed are those who hear it, take it to, take, and take, what, take to heart what is written in it. So that's a matter of you're not only hearing the word, you're willing to absorb that into your life, and this is part of your thinking. And we know beyond that, it's a matter of obedience. Let me prove to you that this prophecy, it also tells us that if we take away from the Word of God, that there's curses. The very curses that are written about in the book of Revelation may very well be a part of your life. So we don't take away from the Word of God. But if you go back to the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, there's a tremendous verse talking about the first five books of the Bible, the law, and here's what it says. Here's this word that comes and is in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, and you may be careful to do everything, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. See, God just doesn't want us to read the word. The power of reading the word is now you know what God says. And when you know what God says, then you are responsible to obey that. It's a matter of obedience, isn't it? And so he says, do not just, uh, do, do not just let, uh, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. So we're talking about people thinking about the word of God day and evening. And I really think that you're really looking at God saying, think about it all day long. As you get up and as you go through the day, turn to it, memorize it, study it, and then he tells you so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. See, one of the things that we're suffering from in our nation right now is we have moved away from the basis of what God has so richly blessed our nation with. And that is our heritage that is in our faith 
And we have moved away from the Word of God. So many people do not know what the Bible says these days. We've just, we've lost this in our culture. Even people that didn't used to go to church on a regular basis, they still had some uh, sense of being familiar with teachings of Scripture, the Ten Commandments, what Jesus had said as the golden rule, what John 3.16 said. Uh, what Jesus said, some of the principles of how to live a moral existence found in Matthew 5, 6, and 7 in the Sermon on the Mount. I mean, there's just so many things that people did have some understanding of. And you've seen the surveys where they go do the man on the street and they ask about books of the Bible or who were the... Who were the who were the four Gospels written by? I mean, you know, it's, it's like almost just watching comedy. It's so uh, hilarious, but yet the truth of the matter is it's, it's deeply sad. And uh, there's just been, there's been a dumbing down of our nation. And uh, we, just, uh, we, we just have so much information flashing at us, people are not taking time to read, meditate, study uh, the Word of God. Uh, let me point out what it says at the end of that passage. So he tells us, don't let the law depart out of your mouth. He's talking about the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Uh, and then he says, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And then listen to the last sentence. Then you will be prosperous and successful. This isn't health and wealth stuff. God's just saying, if you honor my way, you know my word, you meditate on it day and night, I am going to make you prosperous and successful. Now remember, that's God's definition of prosperous and successful. It may not be ours, but I'll take God's any time. Because that's the ultimate compliment in life, that if you're prosperous and successful by God's definition then you're as prosperous and successful as you can be. Amen? You really are. So it's really important that we really drive this thing home. So he promises in Revelation that if you will read and take heed and heart to this prophecy, blessed, happy to be congratulated are you. Then he goes on to tell us, I mean, I can take other passages besides Joshua chapter 1, but I just wanted to throw out these two since we're hitting this kind of in a running commentary way tonight. But it says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Does that not sound very much like Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 where he says, Blessed is the person that reads the words of this prophecy and takes it to heart. It's very similar, isn't it? He says that if you will do this and be careful to do everything written in it, you will be prosperous and successful by God's definition. And believe me, that is the best definition and the best success that we can have. Spiritual su success having a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, living with His assistance, His Holy Spirit living in us because we're a child of God and He has taken up residence in us. He guides our life if we will pay attention to the Spirit of God leading and guiding our life. The more you know the Word, the better you can live for Him. He says, I promise I will bless you. You'll be blessed if you take my Word to heart. So saturate your heart and your mind with the Word of God. With the Word of God. You just can't do better. Two principles we talked about thus far are what? Be a person of prayer. And I use the prayer of Jabez to talk about, you know, I was just using that because it, you know, a lot of people are looking for personal blessings. Well, you can start there. God's going to call you to pray for his will to be done around, the, around this globe, he will call you to pray uh, for that over and over because that's what, the more your heart becomes like him, the more you saturate yourself in the word of God, the more you're going to think like the Lord and what he really cares about. 
Let me share with you a third principle that God promises he will bless. And here it is. This third principle to unlocking blessings into our lives, just like the Beatitudes, happy, congratulated, to blessed are you, he says in the book of James something very, very important. It's already something I just touched on in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. And here's what it is. We are to live our lives with obedience. He doesn't just want us to hear the word. He wants us to obey the word. I touched on that back with Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. James chapter 1, verse 25 says these words. But the man of God who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, and listen to these eight words, or at least in the NIV text. He will be blessed. And then look at the last four. In what he does. Wow. Wow. I, mean, I know you want that in your life. That's something we all want. We want God's blessings in our life. And if you read that entire passage, and you'd have to go back starting in verse 22. I just added the, I just have the last verse there. He tells us in verse 22, don't be hearers only of what? The word, God's word. But he tells us in the second part of that verse, he says, verse 23, but be doers of the word. Don't be hearers only, but be doers. And then down in verse 25, he wraps up that little section of scripture, that paragraph, by telling us that if we look into the law and we do it in an intent, intent fashion, that we do it intently, that it will give freedom into our lives. And if we continue, notice that it's not just you read it one day a week and you practice some things, just those that day or two or three that you read it. But if you continue, this is talking about everyday living, all day long, that the Word of God is your guide to everything you do. That if you continue to do this, not forgetting what He has heard, so I open the Word, and we can quickly glance at it, do a casual reading. I think many of us are guilty of that. When we have our devotions, we may read a passage, but we didn't let it, we didn't really absorb it. We didn't really grasp it and spend time with it, let it, let it speak to us. And what he's saying in this passage, not forgetting what he has heard, what you just heard preached or what you have heard listening on, uh, in your car, maybe to a, a good Bible preacher uh, that you may be listening to on the radio or something you, you've downloaded that you're listening to, that somebody that you uh, really enjoy or you know you can trust that they're going to really teach the Word. Uh, but forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, if you do it, he says what? Eight words. You're going to be blessed in whatever you do. People, we're, we're, we're literally li reading what God says he will bless and honor. Does that mean you're not going to have trouble in your life? Well, sure, you're going to have troubles in your life. God's saying, I will bless you no matter what's going on in your life. My blessings will be a part of your life if you learn to pray, if you learn to Literally, as we just looked at, to saturate your heart and your mind with the Word of God. And then very closely linked to this principle is the matter of obeying the Word of God. Where we fully obey God's Word. In Luke chapter 6, verse 46, it says this. Jesus talking. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? That incredible passage. It's also a very condemning passage, isn't it? It's so easy to say, yes, I know the Lord. Jesus says, don't call me Lord, Lord, in prayer or anything else, if you're not going to do what I say. He wants us to have a relationship 
and what he has told us to do, he wants us to obey that, doesn't he? Listen to this out of the Old Testament, found in 1 Samuel chapter 15. He says, to obey is better than what? Than sacrifice. And to heed is better than the fat of rams. God expects total obedience. And in 1 Samuel 15, he tells us about King Saul and his partial obedience. In fact, some scholars have suggested that Saul's obedience may have been as high as 90%, but it wasn't complete, it wasn't total. So here's God's standard. He wants us to be 100% obedient, and that's what he's talking about. But he wasn't, and God's asking for 100% obedience. I love what our neighboring pastor here in DFW said in his book, Seasons of Life. He said, Chuck Swindoll I'm talking about, he said the very best proof of your love for the Lord is obedience. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Isn't that a great statement? That really is. That is the greatest proof of you saying, I love God. I love Jesus Christ. If you will obey him, Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Well said, Chuck. Pastor Fun. The fourth key to unlocking blessings into your life is to live a righteous life. And I turn you to a passage that very directly speaks to this and promises blessings. I want you to go to the very first Psalm, Psalm 1, and look at what it says. Here it starts off and says, Blessed We've already been studying this word for months now, talking about the Beatitudes, now talking about other passages that talk about things that God promises he'll bless. And that's what I'm going to wrap up with these couple of weeks. To live a righteous life. So fill in the blank there, live. To live a righteous life. Psalm 1 starts off with these words. What does it say? Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight, and look at how it's tied to what we already covered. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates, how often? Kind of what we already covered. Day and night. This is an all day thing when you get serious with God. You think about it, you read his word, you memorize it, you meditate on it. You, 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 you really do give meditation to it so you, you're figuring out how to live this out in your life. You meditate on it day and night. He says, this person will be like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season and whose leaves or whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does... Prospers. Now, closely associated with what we've already covered about how important the Word of God is for blessings. You know, that's why I do this campaign every year at the beginning of the year to try to encourage our people to read the Word. I know it blesses my life, and I know that as your pastor, I, I need the Word of God daily in my life so that I can lead like I need to. Second of all, notice this. You, you really can't live the Christian life if you're not in the Word. And if you're in, not in the Word, you're not going to know what God says. And I know that some are, are you know, more diligent in the Word than others, but you just need to be a part of being in the Word. Listen to this. He tells us that the man will be blessed. And notice that he's always got a resource. You know, one of the things that we struggle with in life is energy, isn't it? And it's sometimes it's a matter of, of, of aging. Sometimes it's a matter of, man, your, your heart has gotten discouraged. Your mind uh, is confused. You see, the Word of God is always filling you back up. That's why God said, my mercies are new every morning. Listen to this. He tells us that our delight is to be in the law of, of the Lord. In his law, we're supposed to meditate day and night. 
And that individual, this is what will result in their life. No matter how dry the culture is, no matter what's happening in Washington, D.C., no matter what's happening in our nation, no matter who's in uh, authority, the Republicans or the Democrats, here's what this passage says to us. He says, you can be steady as a rock because you are living like you should. You have this perpetual resource springing up in you and you'll be like a tree that's by streams of water. Now, what advantage does a tree have that's next to a stream that other trees don't have? Well, obviously the answer is they have a water source perpetually, don't they? Their roots can just stretch out right to the water source. As long as that stream is still running, they have the sun overhead. They got the weather that produces the different cycles with the, the tree and the foliage on the leaves. And then he says in this passage, it yields its fruit in season. So here, here's the picture. This is so incredible. I can be fruitful in my life regardless of outward circumstances of what's going on in the United States, what's going on even in my community. I still can be fruitful as a Christ follower and somebody that really absorbs the Word of God. I meditate on it day and night. God is going to let me be a tree that's planted by streams of water. I have a perpetual resource in God Almighty and nobody can can, can put me out and kill me until God says he's finished with my life and he takes me home. Did you get all that from that? You should have. The stream of water, being a tree planted by a stream of water, notice that it always yields its fruit. Its leaves do, do not wither. And whatever this person does that's like this, what does it say about them? They prosper. Do you think that's blessings? Back to this original word we've been studying for uh, about three months now. God says he's going to bless people that will do this. I already know that as you begin a new year, and we're 13 days in now. It's, it's hard to believe 13 days have, have already passed in this new year. Here we are in 2021. The vaccine's out there. It's getting out slower than what they, they were hoping. Hopefully it speeds up here. But I want to share with you, it's so important that we understand whatever's going on out here, the coronavirus, whatever we're dealing with, what, what's going on in Washington, what happened last Wednesday, whatever's going on, you can still be this person who has ultimate resource in God alone, and can still be producing fruit, still having the water resource that you need, and your leaves not drying up, whatever you do can prosper. Did you hear that? And I'm not a health and wealth preacher. You surely are not hearing me say that tonight. Well, I want to share with you something. I came across a book called Away in the Wilderness. And uh, it's a pretty famous book. It was written by Jamie Buckingham. And when I was uh, in Brevard County, Florida, as a pastor, uh, this is where the Space Center is. And we lived around Coco and Rockledge and Merritt Island. Uh, Jamie was a pastor uh, in the southern part. Uh, it's a very long beach county. And uh, he, uh, I went to uh, have an overview of the prison ministry there. And uh, the day I went, Jamie went and we were the only two pastors that went so I got to talk to him and he's written many books and uh, had some unique ministry there in Florida but he wrote this in his book that book on page it's on page 36 a tragedy of the wilderness experience is not that we have to go through grief and suffering listen to what he says next but that we often miss the blessings from the burning bushes. He talks about the burning bushes that we have in our encounters with God. The things through which God speaks into our life. God still calls us by name 
and he makes his eternal purposes known. Now, the reason I wanted to read that is because sometimes we're such in the pity party of our suffering and our grief that we miss the great big messages that come from Almighty God, the burning bushes that happen when God may heal us or the burning bushes when he just speaks to us. Proverbs chapter 10 says this, verse 6. Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. You might have a translation that actually says, blessings crown the head of the aged, but it is more properly translated righteous there. You see, God wants us to live a righteous life. That's the fourth principle here. And then let me just cover the, the, this fifth principle, if I've got time. Yeah, let me take two or three minutes on this. The fifth key to unlocking blessings into our life, right in the blank on number five, the word humility. God just blesses humility. He wants us to be humble people. You know why we need to be humble? Because we're then on grounds of acknowledging that anything we get that's really blessed or anointed from God is what? It's from Him, not something we did ourselves. James chapter 4, verse 6 says this, and then I'm going to jump down to verse 10. He says, but He gives more grace. That is why the Scriptures say, he's quoting this Old Testament statement, God blesses or God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the who? The humble. He gives grace to the humble. Notice what it says at verse 10. He goes through this litany of things that how we need to humble ourselves before God and then talks about how we can be double-minded and all the things that he says in those couple of verses there. And then verse 10, he comes down and says, humble yourselves before the Lord. And he will, listen, he will do what? He will lift you up. How about that? Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humility. It's kind of like the man who was writing about humility, and he had a couple of book titles, Humility and How I Obtained It. Uh, his next book was The Ten Most Humble Men in the World and How I Chose the Other Nine. Well, that's not humility. I love what Rick Warren said in his Purpose Driven Life book. He wrote these words. He says, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. How about that? It's good witness. I want to ask that we humble ourselves right now, and I want to do something tonight, and uh, it's very, very much like what we did last week. I want to go to Second Chronicles chapter 7, and I want to remind you of verse 14. Our nation's hurting. It is, we are in desperate need for the church to rise up and be a counter voice to all that's going on. We need to be such a verbal witness. And I sure hope, I've been praying that God would have some choice Christian leaders, if not even people that are lay people, that he would rise up in this time and be this, this calming, peaceful voice that could call people to take biblical principles, even if they don't understand them, but they would understand it leads to peace. And having love and forgiveness would be top of the list, wouldn't it? Again, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. We read this last Sunday night when we, or last Wednesday night when we had, uh, our hearts were just deeply troubled at what we watched happen at the Capitol building. It simply reads in verse 14, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I just want to point out four things very quickly. He tells us that 
He wants his people who are called by his name to do four things. Look at this. This is Old Testament, but it still is such good Testament theology. He wants us to do what? He wants us to humble ourselves first. That's the point we just ended with. Humility is something God really blesses. Humility. There's not much humility seen in D.C. today. Look at this. If my people are called by my name, will do what? Humble themselves? Pray. Principle we already talked about tonight. Seek my face. Really take serious the things of God. And then as the people of God, we turn ourselves away from the division and things that separate us in the life of Christ in the church. We need to turn away from our own sin. People need to be able to observe this in us. And then he says, I'll give three blessings as a result of that. One is, I will hear from heaven. We want God to hear our prayers. Two, I will forgive their sins. And three, as Vice President Pence has said all year long about the coronavirus, God, please heal our land. We need to ask God to do just that. I know the vaccine is, is working its way through our nation. It's slower than what they had hoped. They're trying to speed it up by going to some stadiums and large meeting places that more people perhaps can be processed and we'll see how all that goes. But, you know, our hope's not in that virus. I mean, in that vaccine for the virus. Our hope is in the Lord. Absolutely, our hope is in God. And uh, can the vaccine help us? Sure it can. It's, uh, it, it's a smart thing to, to take that so that this thing can get tamed all around the world, here in the States and around the globe. But I want to encourage you to pray for our nation. Um, I didn't watch the hearing today. I was here at the church working. But um, Gary came and told me, he said, well, they, they just voted. And uh, about 10 Republicans uh, had crossed over. And I guess there were four or six or something that didn't vote. Um, I, I still have not looked at, at those numbers. I will tonight when I get home. But my heart just became heavy. And I don't care where you stand. It's a sad, sad day. So I want to encourage you to pray tonight. And I want to remind you to pray for some people that we've been praying for. And I know our time is almost gone. But I just want to encourage you. Um, we've got several people that are, are fighting the coronavirus most everyone is doing pretty well we've had some a little more sick uh tristan anderson and uh glenn anderson uh earl and susan kemp uh doing much better earl's had a little more trouble than susan has um, w tiffany i talked to tiffany today uh, the vargases tiffany's clear Josue still uh, last week at the end of the week tested positive still. Um, she is probably going to be here to lead worship this week. We, we are not going to have him back yet until he is clear for a while. So uh, be praying for Josue to, because see, that doesn't just affect our, our, our contemporary worship service. He is leading the music in the Spanish service. So it's kind of a double whammy. They've been kind of doing a hodgepodge for a couple weeks while they've been out. So pray over that. We still pray over Diana Hernandez's brother. Uh, I also want to remind you that uh, Jolita uh, Lee's dad passed away. That service will be up in uh, Bonham um, this coming Saturday at noon. And uh, if you'll look at the newsletter, and then we're going to send it out tomorrow as well as just an email blitz to the church uh, or all that are on the email list. That's why I'm telling you, you need to be on the email list so you can get this information. But uh, they're having visitation from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock there in Bottom uh, uh, this, this week on Friday night. 
And then on Saturday, this coming Saturday at noon, the funeral will be there at the funeral home. And again, that information of the funeral home and the address is in the newsletter, and we will be emailing that again. My heart is deeply distressed for another death we've had this week. Um, Muriel Barker passed away Saturday. And uh, she, uh, you know, last year in December, she got up and gave a testimony about witnessing and how she'd witnessed since she got back here and she wasn't in Vietnam anymore. Um, 89 years young, she passed away. Such a saint of God, such a witness for Almighty God. Uh, there are no uh, uh, funeral arrangements at this point. They may do something very rushed here before one of the daughters goes back Monday, and they may just wait about a month. So as we get information, we'll share that. But we just want you to know that. And there are so many others that uh, need our prayers. I want you to pray for Donna Cannon. I want you to pray for Linda McLean. Uh, she is in horrendous pain since her back surgery. Uh, they have found out that a couple of the, the vertebrae that were out of alignment, that were uh, uh, not ruptured, but they were, uh, I'm trying to think of the other word, uh, but uh, they, they had shaved those off. Well, the nerve has gotten pinched. One of the nerves going down her leg or back uh, has gotten pinched in between those two. So Monday they're going to try to see what they can do to correct that. And uh, there are just so many others. I want you to pray for Gloria Herrera and uh, her sister's uh, brother, uh, Richard, and uh, just needs uh, prayers, uh, Alice. Uh, and Christina Simonson is going to be starting treatments. So be very mindful to pray for her. And there are, there are so many. Please pick up a prayer sheet when you're here on Sunday. Um, or get on the email list to receive those. And um, I'm, I just, uh, I want to ask that we just have prayer together. And uh, I, I want to ask Nathan if he would be so kind to, to lead us in prayer tonight. And Nathan, I'm going to in, invite you up and uh, get you a microphone here that you can use. And... Uh, this brother uh, preaches and teaches God's Word, and we're thankful for that. But as many of those prayer needs as you can remember, in fact, I'll, I'll give you that sheet. If you can read my sloppy left-handed writing. But Nathan, thanks for being here and leading us in prayer. And I just wanted to tell you something about this dear brother. Over Christmas break, he's engaged. He doesn't have a ring on his finger because she's got it, yes. right? <laughs> she, she has it. She definitely has it. Yeah. Yes. But lead us in prayer, buddy. Uh, dear Lord, we just uh, ask that you uh, heal our land of uh, this virus that is uh, raging right now. Holy Father, uh, we pray, pray for protection over uh, those people that uh, have it, including uh, Tristan and Glenn and um, Josue, and uh, Holy Father, we just uh, pray for uh, those that have uh, passed on, and uh, we just pray for uh, this church as we, as we continue on, Holy Father, yes. uh, help us to, to serve you in the way that, uh, that you would want us to do, and help us to be good examples for uh, those of us uh, are those around the nation that uh, may have lost their way in terms mm -hmm. of what it means to uh, be a Christ follower. Holy Lord, just uh, be with us, keep us safe, and help us to uh, return to you in whatever, uh, whatever setting that may be, whether it be in the church or in your own homes, uh, in yes. our own homes. I pray to you, Nathan. Amen. Amen. And Nathan, you served a dual purpose. You can kill me after the sir, after we we sign off here. But your uh, fiance's name again is Sarah. Sarah, and you know I just wanted you to hear some good news today because you know Jesus is alive, and that's the greatest news. But this brother, he's getting married, and I think the date is July twenty fourth. 
July 24th. So everybody type in right now, congratulations, all right? And uh, thanks, for, thanks for sharing, appreciate that. Hey, we're signing off. Thank you. I'm Barry Jude, lead pastor here at the Oaks. Thanks for joining our Bible study. If there's anything you can do for our nation right now, it's to keep going to God in prayer. Please remember that under these circumstances that we all feel all that's going on right now. God bless you.